Hey, we're Erin and Jennifer Smith, your hosts of the Marriage After God podcast, where our desire is to help you cultivate an extraordinary marriage. And although we are a marriage podcast, today on this episode, we are going to be talking about words we should speak over our children. If this is your first time, I want to invite you to subscribe to our channel, whether you're watching on YouTube, which is a new thing for us, newer thing, <laughs> um, or listening on iTunes or Spotify, wherever you connect with this podcast, would you subscribe so that you don't miss any episodes in the future? Lastly, one of the most important ways, one of the most powerful ways you can participate in helping grow this channel, get this content out, is by leaving us a star rating and review. Not only do we love seeing those, not only do they encourage us, but they also help the algorithms show our content to more people. Um, here's a review that someone recently left. Uh, this is by Amanda G. She left a five-star rating. Thank you for that, Amanda. She said, I first discovered Aaron Jennifer Smith and Marriage After God about six years ago. I was going through something in marriage that I felt so alone in, and I didn't think anyone else understood the physical and emotional pain it caused. Then I came across Jennifer's book, The Unveiled Wife, and it was such an encouragement to me because it not only showed me that someone else understands what I was going through, but it gave me hope for our circumstances and was a reminder to me on how God is good through all of it. I love when he uses people in books or podcasts as a tool of comfort and to meet you where you're at and to remind you you're not alone. Since then, I read all of their books and <laughs> thoroughly enjoy their podcast. It's a great resource if you are if you are truly desiring to have a marriage after God. They not only give practical tips and resources, but their vulnerability to share not even uh, to share not even not just the joys of marriage, but the challenges too. Rooted in biblical teaching is really encouraging, and they're intentional and they. Their intentionality and love for the Lord, each other, and for others shines through. Well, thank you, Amanda. That was awesome. That was the first time yeah. I've heard that one. And I it took me back because she talked about Unveiled Wife. And I can't was, believe it's been 10 years. That was about 10 years ago. 10 yeah. years since that came out. And I love hearing that it's still impacting people. It's really cool. Yeah. It's beautiful. That's awesome. So what's been going on with us? Well, before we mention that, we can't we can't not mention the elephant in the room, Erin. That you tried to match me today, for those of you on YouTube <laughs> or Instagram watching us, uh, we We're both, both what is it, we what both came called? up to podcast and plaid shirts. Pla it's just how, how much we love each We're other. We're plaiding it up. <laughs> <laughs> We sat down and we we were about to record. We looked at each other. We're like, you're wearing plaid? <laughs> Listen, if you are catching us visually, would you just uh, DM us on Instagram and let us know who wore it best? Thanks. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> okay. That's yeah. out of the way. You look good. Thanks. I'm glad. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Something that I wanted to share in just this quick life notes section is that I was driving the other day and it hit me that I can do hard things, which is something that we share with our kids a lot. We're the Smiths. We do hard things. <laughs> I feel like we were, that's on repeat. Um, the kids hear it a lot. But I don't tell myself it a lot. And something happened where, um, what was it? Oh, it was out in the garden. I told you last week that I've been out there and I've been wanting this, like the grass edged and trimmed out. Yeah, this is not the wood border. <laughs> I don't like it when grass just kind of keeps going and then gets splotchy and it's like, what are you doing over there? <laughs> grass. This is a little funny. <laughs> this is a little funny. <laughs> and so usually when I need or want something, I just say, Erin, <laughs> come and help me. And you were very busy. And I remember you said, well, if that's what you want, you should get to it or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> paraphrasing. Um, I'm in a very gentle way encouraging her that she he, can do hard things. He doesn't usually tell me no, but in that moment, he very nicely and gently told me no. And uh, and so I, I looked at the project and I thought, okay, well, it's probably going to really suck. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> I didn't want to do it at all. But uh, the kids were playing really good and I took that little square shovel and I started digging at the grass and I realized that, you that I could it. actually do it. And it was hard. And especially being pregnant, every time I bent over to like m move the stuff that I was trying to move out of the way, mm -hmm. I'd get a little bit dizzy. Um, and I just didn't like it very much. I didn't like that I was out there without you. Really, that was the bottom and line. before everyone gets all mad at me because I <laughs> made my pregnant wife go dig some grass. I wanted to. I didn't make her do anything. She <laughs> said she wanted to do something. And I said, if you want it, you should go do it. I, what The real problem was is I wanted, I wanted it done in that moment and I wasn't willing yes. to wait for you. But that's exactly. okay. Because then I was driving later on and it just hit me. Maybe it was just the Lord and his grace. And he was like, Hey Jen, I just want to remind you, you did that thing you didn't want to do and you actually enjoyed it. But by the end of it, I was like, yeah. Oh, look what I accomplished. So now it's all ready for you to trim out with that wood edging stuff. You got it. No, I do need your help on that. You know where the drill's at. 
You know the sledgehammers. Uh, I can I just say I love doing yard projects with you. It's my favorite time of year to get outside and. We, we both like it. You need to yeah. tell them so that they we know. We do. <laughs> I, I like it. I'm just being a good um, husband and helping you yeah. grow and cultivate your abilities. <laughs> now, my, my dad growing up always said something to me, like I would something I'd never done before if I like did it one time. Mm-hmm. He'd come and be like, you know, you just did. And I'd be like, what? So like, you just set a precedent. And I'm like, <laughs> Oops. what's a precedent? <laughs> He's like, it means you can do it now. Yeah. And what that mean, what my dad was saying when he would say that is, I can that ask is, you to do that thing now, and I know you, you know can how do to it. do that thing now. You're capable of doing that thing. <laughs> you can do that thing. That's funny. Yeah. When I was thinking, so like, you just set a precedent. Well, when I was feeling accomplished that I could do hard things, there was a handful of other things that I had done like that week that I was being reminded of in the moment, and it was really encouraging. Actually, you guys should ask the Lord to reveal to you what hard things you've done lately, because you might surprise yourself, and You're it like, feels wow, good. I did that. Yeah. yeah. It does feel good to do really cool things yeah. and hard things mm-hmm. and. Push yourself. And also, I, I really the reason I like doing yard stuff mm-hmm. to go back to that is I like being able to see a finished. Oh, I love it. Product. You like before and afters. Oh yeah. Yeah. Anytime I'm on Instagram and the girls post like tap before to clean, yeah. yeah, I'm like yes. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> or even yeah. Okay, so uh, the other the other thing I was going to mention because we've been out in the garden is you built me hoop gardens. Like raised beds with these this plastic and PVC hoop thing, mm-hmm. which is really nice because we live in a colder climate, and I've been really nervous to start gardening. I've wanted to, but I'm I'm worried that anything that I put out there is going to die, and so we needed some sort of covering because where we live, it actually has no frost free days, guaranteed. It's a very short growing. Yeah, we season. have a small little window, but the hoop garden will make yeah. it bigger. I want to make a note though. The main portion of the boxes mm-hmm. were actually built by some really good friends of ours, Stan oh. and Chris. Thank you, Stan. While Thank we you, were Chris. in California dealing with my brother mm-hmm. and his loss, um, the loss of my brother, um, they came over and built those boxes for you. I was so grateful. For your birthday. Thank you, guys. Um, what I did, though, is I built the lid portion of it and the hoops. The hoop part, but yeah. they did. we have those boxes because of them. So, so. cool. And they're nice boxes. And they, look, they think they're going to work. Yeah. I think we're going to be able to get an extended growing season this year because we have those. So, um, by the way, going back to messaging us, if you have tips on growing in cold climates, yeah. you can message reach, Unveiled Wife on Instagram. She I need loves all the help I, tips. I need all the help I can get. I actually sat on YouTube last <clears> night <throat> after the kids went to bed looking at garden tours of Zone 3 because that's like the coldest climate that we have right now. Or like... Technically, we're zone six being in Bend, but our microclimates really matter. And so I'm looking in zone three things. And I was watching all the mm-hmm. um, different garden tours of what people are planting. And it was super fun. And fun. Olive came out because she heard my YouTube on. And she came and sat with me. And we talked about different flowers we wanted to grow this season. It was encouraging. Yeah, I heard you guys when you came in last night. I was like, what are you doing? And you're like, oh, I was looking at garden stuff with Olive. And I was like, oh, I bet you she got filled up from that. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Which I know you didn't have to say anything, but it also reaffirmed me that letting her stay up was a good thing and just spending that extra time with her. So I appreciate the extra words. Yeah. And, I, and I know it probably filled her up. Yeah. <laughs> she loved that. Speaking of filling up children, we thought it would be so beneficial since we were talking about words this series. The last, um, This is our eighth week doing words. Last episode on words. in the series. Uh, we, we were going to talk about um, the words that we can speak over our children and why it's important. So before we jump into this, I was thinking of notes and what, what we wanted to talk about and the kids were all playing around me and I just thought, I haven't asked them a question in a long time to share on the podcast, so maybe I'll do that. And I was really surprised by their answers, so I just wanted to share some of them. This is great. This probably could be the whole episode. No. (laughs) Let's give them only what the kids answered. I will say this. Based off of my kids' answers, I was really encouraged by it, and I just wanted to encourage you that if you have kids, um, asking them these three simple questions and being surprised by what they have to answer. Um, Okay, so the first question I asked them was, what words do you hear from mom and dad? that you love. So I just Mm. said, Hey kids, come here. And it was kind of funny because we have five kids and they all kind of talked over each other or piggybacked off what each other were saying. So I almost wish that I had pulled them each aside individually, but I don't know. I don't know which way you want to do it. (laughs) So what words, what kind of words do you like to hear from us? And the first thing that Wyatt said was, I forgot about this. Bingo, (laughs) bango, mango, mongo, which is an inside joke for our family. We came up with it back when Elliot was little, and it was just a fun way to say yes, like that you did something right or you answered something like bingo, right. Bingo, bango, bango, mango, mango, yeah, mango. It just means yeah, like, can't even say it. it means yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, uh, along the years, 
we'll just randomly say bingo, bingo, mango, mongo. <laughs> the kids love it. I can't believe you remember that. Yeah. So inside joke. Um, Elliot mentioned anytime you say thank you, love bucket or love button. These are nicknames that I came up with him. And when he said like, that. Uh, names of endearment. Yes. Yeah. And when he, when he said that, Olive goes, oh, yeah, I love it when you call me sweetheart or even buttercup. I love buttercup because it reminds me of being filled up like pudding and pudding's my favorite dessert. <laughs> She was a little dramatic so when like she was a, answering. Like a pudding cup? <laughs> I, I do love pudding too. Olive is a lot like me. Um, and then one of the other kids said, I love you. <laughs> they accentuated it the way they said it. When you were, so we were sh- sharing our notes document. You were writing these as I was working on it. I also. could see your little typing thing. Yeah. And you were like, they were just coming in. And I was like, at <laughs> first, I had no doing? idea what she was talking about, but <laughs> this was all her answers. It was awesome. Um, Truett, our five-year-old, he's a real honest kid. That's why we call him Truett. Truett. I said, I said, Truett, um, what are some words that mom and dad say that you love to hear? And he said, you don't say much that I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Truett. Oh, my goodness. I, I really need to get in that kid's space, I guess. <laughs> we uh, do. We need to get in his space a little more probably. <laughs> I need to say – I need to come up with some funny things that he'll remember. Specifically for him. Uh, yeah. Well, he says a lot of funny things that he we remember. He's so funny. Oh, yeah. What was that one? We, he's like, I'm the coldest on the boat. And no, we, I said, he said something like, um, yeah, I'm the coldest on the and boat. And he's like, and, and our I friend said, Jordan was like, oh, you're cool. And he said, not cool like awesome. But he's so <laughs> cool like freezing. Cool like <laughs> yeah. freezing. And so that's an inside I joke. I Jordan sa- said he was I don't not remember. cool. Anyways, he's super funny. Um, okay, so your kids might be super honest with you, and that's still a good thing. <laughs> um, Elliot said he likes it when we say get her done or like talk in a funny accent. Get, that's not usually you. Slang. Usually yeah. you like to say funny things. Uh, I never say anything funny ever, do I? <laughs> <laughs> I think you're the one that came up with bingo, bango, mango, mango. Probably. Okay. Um, when, okay, Olive came up with this one. She said, when dad does Bible time and he says things like, you are all children of God, it makes me feel really good because God's powerful and he protects us just like dad. Aww. I know it was really sweet. Olive Hers were really all sweet. really, really sweet. She, so, she's trying to butter me up. Is what she's doing. <laughs> Buttercup. So these were words that they love to hear from us. Um, lots of nicknames and things that were funny. Real quick. I want to mention one. I remember a long time ago when Elliot was, gosh, maybe two or three. He was, he was able to talk, but he was so young. And I remember I was driving with him. It was just me and him. And I call, I just like, we were talking. I called him buddy. Mm-hmm. I think it was the first time I ever called him buddy. And he like looked at me and he's like, he's like, I'm your buddy. And Aww. I said, yeah. And he's like, and I could see it in his face. He was so like, Moved. yeah, he's uh, like, I'm dad's buddy. I, I didn't even know yeah. about this. <laughs> yeah. You've been holding out on it for 11 years. It was like, like a, um, it was one of the first moments of like, I love that. I can't like that one one little phrase mm-hmm. made him made his whole day. So cool. Like he felt so special that I called him my, his, my buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really sorry. I thought this section was going to be uh, like a quick, pa- fast paced thing. And it's like taking up a little bit of time. But the next section I asked the kids, um, I said, OK, so what are some words that you would love to hear from us more? Is there anything? Okay. I didn't know how they were going right, to answer these. Right. Um, Olive said, I really love it when you call me little princess. I think you only did it once or twice. <laughs> and then Edie caught on and said, yeah, you should call me ballerina. <laughs> Edie's funny. I know. She's funny. Um, Olive also mentioned, I love it when you get excited. So sometimes when I'm teaching them something or there's just something going on that I get really excited about. You get excited when we're on road trips. Oh, yeah. Like different weather changes and like, or storm. Thunderstorms. Like thunderstorm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm funny like that. And um, the kids get all excited with you. Yeah. Or sometimes during Bible time, if they're like, there's a concept that I really want them to learn, I get really pumped up. She <laughs> said that it makes her really excited. That's true. Yeah. Who said this other one? So doing, was it Elliot? Yeah. <laughs> Elliot just, as we were talking, he said, he just blurted out, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And he was real serious about it. I was like, okay. And um, is that like reciting scripture? And he goes, yeah, definitely. So he wants us to recite scripture more. Um, that uh, I think this was either Trude or Wyatt. They said that we, they want us to tell them that they can have more free time. Oh, okay. Yeah. More free time. So, like no, you guys, our kids are homeschooled. Less, and less school, more free time. <laughs> that's what they said. Less, less school, more And free I always time. try to remind my kids that they get much more free time than most kids. <laughs> and they want more of it. Um, that we do hard things, which that one surprised me because I feel like we shared a lot. 
We share that phrase a lot. We do I, I'll admit, I don't, we haven't, I haven't heard as much as we used to say it. Well, then we need to go so back to So maybe we more. need to go like, but that means we have to do hard things. So Last one, when they were smaller, we used to say things all the time that, you know, like, I love you to the moon and back, or Wyatt specifically came up with this one, I love you through time and space to a new world. And they both recognized, two of my kids recognized that they want us to say things like that more. Mm. Maybe treat them like they're a little bit younger than I they like are. It. I don't know. So the last uh, question that I asked them, I said, okay, so what are some words that you don't want us to say anymore? <laughs> well, uh, Wyatt said that there's a surprise going on because he just wants to know what it is. <laughs> oh, he doesn't like he doesn't like not being told. Yeah. yeah. And then Truett said, I don't want you to say there's an emergency when there's not one like going to get ice cream instead. Because <laughs> there was this one time that me and a friend, we thought it would be really funny because all the kids were playing really good. And we're like, we just want to treat them. And yeah. so we're like, let's tell them there's an, it was my idea. I know it was wrong, but I said, tell them there's an emergency and we all get in the car really fast and we just show up to the ice cream store because I thought that'd be really fun. Well, it actually was pretty dramatic and they thought there was something serious going on. Tra- Some of them traumatic. started crying. <laughs> And we had to tell them, no, 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 we're just going to get ice cream. And so that really stuck with them. I've never done it again. Learn my lesson the hard way. <laughs> we save serious words for serious things. Got it. Got it. Yeah. New mom over here. No. <laughs> um, okay. And then um, the last one I was kind of shocked by. Some of our older kids said, sometimes when there's something that happens really fast, um, there's not good words shared, which Aaron and I don't cuss. But sometimes we let things slip like dang or we say words that we don't let stupid. the kids say. And so that was what they said, dang or stupid. Um, and it or doesn't shoot feel good. Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. I can't even think of another one. But yeah. So but they're, they're words that they're not allowed to say. And I was so when they hear us it. say it, like when I stub my toe or I break something yeah. or because something happens and they'll look at me and they'll be like, you shouldn't say that. <laughs> So, and then I have to say, I have to look at it and say, I'm sorry, you're right, I shouldn't say that. Anyways, one I just, word I think that they wouldn't want us to say anymore that they didn't mention. They don't like the word maybe. Oh no, Edith. Edith says that maybe has no in it. That's how her how she phrases it. Maybe has no in it. Yeah. Because it does. Because maybe it could be <laughs> yes or no. And she doesn't like she it because it has no. She wants a straightforward answer. Yeah. Really, what she wants is yes, because she's like me. And, and what's she... funny is the Bible tells us to let her yes <laughs> be our yes and her no be our no. So she's not wrong. And so the kids are always like. When we say maybe, uh, often they'll be like, maybe means no. Yeah. <laughs> We're like, well, That's no it means maybe, but it usually means no. <laughs> so after going through these three questions, I just realized that our kids, so our age range is uh, 4 to 11, and they just have a lot to share. And so if you guys have kids, really it doesn't matter what age they are, um, as long as they, they can mm-hmm. share in a conversation, uh, you might be surprised by the things that they've been impacted by with your words. And so it might be a good, cool conversation to have with them. And if you ask your kids, they'll tell you. Yeah. They'll tell you. <clears throat> so why are we talking about words with our children today? Well, because we all need the reminder that words are powerful and that with our words, we're constantly either building them up mm-hmm. or tearing them down. And when I say building them up or tearing them down, I'm talking about like their emotional well-being, their mental, their mental spiritual, spiritual, everything, um, and their uh, self-esteem. And you can see that in children. Like, wh- wh- where are they? How are they doing? You know, are they flourishing? Do, are, they, um, are they struggling in certain areas? And mm-hmm. we as parents should regularly be evaluating our impact on our children um, and letting the Holy Spirit convict our hearts in areas that we need to change, grow in, mature in. And so... Um, yeah, we just wanted to share about these. Um, today's episode is going to highlight some positive words that we can share with them. Um, but I think it's important to note that there are things that we can do that could hurt our children. Mm -hmm. Um, things that we've experienced is like sarcasm. Um, especially as my kids got older, they called it out in me and I've really been trying to work on that. But when we say things in a sarcastic way, it can leave them feeling deflated. Or, that, or misunderstood, like they don't understand what's going on. Something that my kids are very sensitive to, especially Elliot, but really all of them. If I generalize, if, if a mess oh, has yeah. been made and it was just the two littles that made the mess. But you're saying to But all, I say, yeah. you kids always make a mess. Mm-hmm. Or my son will look at me and be like, I didn't do that. Yeah. And he feels very offended that I lump <laughs> him in with the wrongdoers mm-hmm. and he doesn't appreciate being generalized yeah. into the conversation mm-hmm. and he calls me out all the time on it he's like did i he'll he'll do this 
did I? <laughs> like when you say all, are you meaning me? He just wants clarification yeah. that you're recognizing. But it, it is not right to just do that, to, mm-hmm. to uh, equalize all of them mm-hmm. in a situation that doesn't deserve that. And so that that's an that's an offensive way. Well, it's a pain in any relationship. Anytime someone says you always, you never, you yeah. know, being generalized. Well, and and including you into something that you don't belong in yeah. in a negative way. Yeah. And that's hurtful. And yeah. so he's he communicates that to me. Mm-hmm. And Olive will do the same thing. Yeah. Um, I would imagine Wyatt and Truett are probably right behind them. But yeah. those two are the oldest and they they kind of they see it now and they recognize mm-hmm. it. Another one, um, which is true for marriage too, and we mentioned it last episode, but criticizing. Um, if you have a an encouragement, a critique, something that you want to share with somebody to encourage growth, an exhortation, yeah. that's more of a positive way of sharing something with someone. Um, but when you criticize harshly and you're reactionary and you... Um, which is something I struggle with. For sure. Well, I think everyone in that moment of like your flesh gets in the way can say something the wrong way um, and your opinion gets out. (laughs) Um, It could be really, like I said, deflating, discouraging. Um, So we need to be careful of those things. Another one that I noted here is just the lack of words. Sometimes when you neglect to say something that your kids need to hear Mm -hmm. um, can also be damaging. And I think it leaves a longing in our children to hear certain words. Certain encouragement. Not taking opportunities we have to speak mm-hmm. to our children, to have a conversation with them. Mm-hmm. Could be detrimental. Yeah. Okay. So those aside, we did want to just jump into, um, we have seven words that we wanted to share with you guys today. And it's a little bit different than last episode because uh, last episode we shared specific phrases that we could share in our marriage with our spouse, to our spouse. Um, but today we're going to share a specific word with you and then maybe go into yeah. how do you encourage your children based off that word. Yep. Does that make sense? That's good. Okay. So um, first, before we dive in, I just wanted to share an article that I read from uh, News. Dot mit.edu. And it's a, a I'm going to summarize it for you guys, but I thought it was really interesting. Um, MIT cognitive scientist found that conversation between an adult and child appears to change the, chil- the child's brain and that the back and forth conversation is really critical to language development. Mm. And I was so encouraged when I, whenever you read something scientific and it's something that you're already doing, you're like, yes, <laughs> you know? So, um, I felt really uh, pumped up in this area because affirmed by it because I'll share in a bit, but I feel like we do a really good job of conversing with our children and giving them those opportunities to go back and forth. Another way that they kind of phrased it was conversational turns or conversational duets, and but it's just this idea of going back and forth. And they're like asking a question and waiting for an answer. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um, and they did their study between ages four and six. So it's kind of like that early development of like they're learning how to communicate. And I think often with those ages, it can be so easy to talk to our children, tell them what to do, what they shouldn't do, why they're doing it, what, you know, all mm-hmm. of the talking at rather than talking with. Yeah, yeah. And I think the difference really is questioning and giving them room to really think about it and share about it. And that's basically what this um, study was saying and how it really helps form language skills in those children. Um, And that, let me just read this one part. It says, they found that um, differences in the number of conversational turns accounted for a large portion of the differences in brain physiology. Sorry, physiology. physiology and language skills that they found among the children. This finding applied to children regardless of parental income or education. So it kind of like didn't matter of status. Doesn't matter of all the lines that you can draw for this. Yeah. It's just because of the char- uh, parent-child relationship um, or adult-child relationship. And, and it how was they talk. also the study found that it was less about the quantity of words and more about the uh, type of conversation. Like, so you're not just talking at the kids, but that that back and forth, the communi- the, the conversational yep. perspective and attitude of the of how you're engaging with your children. Yeah, and just how that that um, impacts their brain it's for further development. It's something that we've done even from when our our children were babies. Um, I've never been good at baby talk, I, in various ways. In some ways, there's, there's certain cute things, but we've always talked to our kids as if they fully understand what we're saying. Mm. 
whether they did or not, but we always assumed they understood and we talked to them as they understood, uh, as if they were understanding us. And, and I do believe that that helped them have better understanding mm -hmm. and better communication skills and better vocabulary. But um, that's just something that we did. No one told us that we didn't need to do that. I don't know why we did that, but it's just my natural way of communicating with babies. <laughs> yes. Well, and that's why I felt so affirmed in this, because I do see that our family does this, um, especially just giving opportunity with like family Bible time, which isn't every single day, but it's often enough that we get that back and forth or they get to ask a question or you get to ask a question. Mm -hmm. And there, there's just a mutual giving in that Good relationship. Example. I'm talking about something and the kids are allowed to raise their hands and ask questions mm -hmm. or put input. Edie raises her hand. She oh, did it like 20 so times today. Funny. And she goes, and she's got her Bible open because mom got her a new yep. Bible and it's beautiful. <laughs> and she's looking and she said, well, she's like, God um, makes us so, <laughs> well, I'm all, so good. That's right, Edie. Yeah. Good. Thank you. <laughs> she looked all proud of herself for being able to so just engage. She's she's engaging and she's a part of the conversation mm -hmm. and, and I'm she's giving a, a comment, an answer, a question and I think when so. we do this, what we've seen is through our experience is just that the children get a boost of confidence. Yep. Like I was just able to match where you're at and you're my dad or you're my mom. You know, you're older than me. And I just said something that. Oh, man. And often they say stuff important. that I'm like, whoa, I know that was good. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> it's so good. So I did, I did want to read this quote from John Gabrielli. He's the um, professor in health science and technology. Um at MIT. And he said, uh, the really novel thing about our paper is that it provides the first evidence that family conversation at home is associated with brain development in children. Mm. It's almost magical how parental conversation appears to influence the biological growth of the brain. And it's I know really this good. sounds really scientific, but basically if you, if you love your children and you desire to see them grow and mature, and especially in like cognitive language area, have conversations with them. I love how they put conversation mm. duet. You're going back and forth. It's like a dance. It's not just you're talking to them. It's not just um, putting boundaries all the time or asking questions like, why did you do that? <laughs> because yeah. we can get caught up in doing those things. But really, it's like a getting to know them and allowing them to express themselves. Side note, this makes me, if this is how we biologically as humans grow and engage, it makes me think about prayer. And how oh, yeah. our, as children of God, our communication to God mm -hmm. helps develop our spiritual minds. So good. And our spiritual hearts and our, I don't know, I was just, when I was listening, I was like, huh. That was a good little side wonder note. wonder why he wants us to talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It grows us. <laughs> oh, I love that. So pray more. Um, mm. Okay. So with all that said, I just wanted to seven words. go into seven words that we can speak over our children. Go for it. Yeah. The first word is purpose. This is a huge one. Currently, the current generation of, of young people, this is something that they hugely lack. Mm -hmm. And they're looking for it and they, they long for it. And they're trying to grasp to anything that will give them purpose. That's why we, as parents, should be speaking to our children that they absolutely have purpose mm -hmm. and to guide them toward purpose. And this doesn't mean that we have to have an answer for them on that question, like, what do you want to be when you grow up? No. It's not a it's not a labeling. It's not an identification thing. It's an understanding of who we are thing. Yeah. Right? And this this is a purpose that goes so much deeper than, than just occupation or mm -hmm. just, um, you know, this thing I'm going to do in my life mm -hmm. with, with who I am. Or even like mission work. Like, what, what do you feel called to do in life? As far as like, how are you going to serve the Lord? Or those things yeah. are important. But, but the purpose is even d deeper than that. Reminding our children that God created them, first and foremost, mm -hmm. that they are made in the image of God. There's purpose in that. Mm -hmm. There's there's meaning in their, cre in their existence. Apart from everything else. Apart from how much money they make. Apart from what, they, what, what they'll ever do with their life. Apart from if they're ever, if they're ever famous or known. That they're valuable mm -hmm. and purposed, that they were created with purpose and meaning, and that they're known. And so, letting your children, not letting, teaching them that, showing them that, reminding them that, making that so important all the time that in every opportunity you have to point that out to them. Mm -hmm. um, Elliot brought up, he's like, it's so interesting that that 
you know, monkeys and chimpanzees are like the closest things to humans. He's like, but God only made humans in his image. I'm like, yeah. I said, monkeys may seem close to us, but they were not made in God's image. You were. You are special. You were created in the image of God, not a monkey. Mm. And so taking every opportunity to remind them of the purposefulness Mm -hmm. that they were created in, that they were created with God's image, in God's image, to be image bearers, and to remind them of that is is probably one of the most foundational things we can do for our kids is to make sure that they know that purely in their humanity, they have purpose, Mm -hmm. regardless of everything else. We'll set them up for so much good in their life and so much um, stability and boldness Mm -hmm. and strength to endure so much in this life. I think this is a huge one for our kids to know. Someone uh, once encouraged that um, kids are like sponges, and the more we can soak into them while they live in our home and are with us, uh, the less they'll be able to soak up of the Mm -hmm. world once they're outside of our home, uh, you know, as adults. And I I love that analogy, and it reminds me every day to um, pour into them to douse them with the truth and with these things that we're talking about today. And sometimes that's merely just by repetition. And so one practical way that I love to remind my children that they have purpose is at night when we pray for them. And I pray and ask God to reveal their purpose to them, that they would know their purpose, that they would dream about their purpose, and that they would be secure in their purpose. And so you guys can take that as a little Mm. tip if you want, or uh, find a meaningful way that you can encourage your kids that they have purpose. And one main purpose, I, I brought up how they're made in God's image, mm-hmm. is to be an image bearer. Mm-hmm. So we may have been made in God's image, but until we fully believe in Jesus and we can, we follow him and we walk in faith and our life begins to be transformed by him to look like him, to bear his image in this world, to be witnesses for him, Essentially, that's our, our, That's the main purpose that we exist, is to bring him glory. And so, but that even starts at just the value of humanity, the mm-hmm. value that they are as a human being. And that purpose transcends, like you said, any occupation or anything that they're going to do in the future because you can do it yeah. just by living your life and by what you believe. A verse that really stood out to me when thinking about purpose and how we can share scriptures to back up these words with our kids, is Ephesians 2.10. It says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Mm. That word workmanship, I've always liked that one. It, I think the, the Greek word is poema. Mm. It's where we get the word poem. And it's like, it's a masterfully put together work, which is really cool. Um, another verse is Psalm 139.13-18. through 18. For you, you formed me you formed my inward parts. You knitted, knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderfully, Wonderful are your works. There's that word works, you know. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, in, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written, every one of them, the days that were formed for me. When as yet there were none of them. How precious to me are your thoughts, O oh God. How vast is the sum of them. If I would count them, they are more than the sand. I wake and I am still with you. Mm-hmm. This is showing that how important you are as a hum- human, mm-hmm. as a person, that God's thoughts towards you are good. And it's amazing that he even has thoughts towards us and that he knew us before we even formed. We were in his mind. And so... Instilling that in our children goes much further beyond just them adopting what we believe. Mm -hmm. Well, like I was talking about that sponge, if they're soaked up so full, believing that they are valuable, worthy, have purpose, have purpose, all of these positive things, then when, like we all know, happens when you're an adult, you get bombarded with insecurity, doubt, and lies. Uh, When they're bombarded with Things like I'm not worthy or I didn't do that thing right, therefore I'm not, yeah, you know, you didn't get the job that you wanted, up. you didn't get that degree you wanted. You Those things get... are not going to be able to penetrate what is true. Yeah, because deep down they'll understand who they are at the corest of levels. Mm-hmm. And um, it kind of reminds me of 
last episode when we shared phrases that uh, we should share with our spouse and that one that says, I am for you. This kind of plays into that a little bit as parents. We are believing that our children have purpose. Therefore, they will end up believing that they have purpose. And we're basically saying like, we are Mm -hmm. for you when we share positive messages like that. That's a good reminder um, because it's something I wasn't even thinking about, but making sure our children know that they have purpose regardless of anything they've accomplished yet. Yeah. Like they haven't become anything yet. They haven't even learned anything Mm -hmm. yet. They haven't done anything amazing yet. Mm -hmm. They have purpose Mm -hmm. and they have meaning and they have value. And it's regardless of anything that they've done yet. So it's intrinsic in them, which is beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. The next word um, that we should speak over our children is peace. And uh, this is so Our vital. Kids it's need so this important. Lot with each other. <laughs> we have a big family, peace. and so we need to remind them often that we need peace. But um, a, a really big thing as parents is that we need to remember that we also set the tone and the atmosphere for the home. It's true. And we need to consider are our words, are our actions bringing our home peace or chaos? And we often set the example, yeah. so they're going to. They're going to do what they see. Sometimes we're the chaos bringers. Sometimes we are. Um, Sometimes they are, like you said, with their siblings. And so we need to remind them, hey, be peacemakers. This is what God's word says. Uh, Matthew 5, 5, 9 says, blessed are the peacemakers because they will be called sons of God. Mm -hmm. Which you just had a big talk with the kids that when it says like sons of God, (laughs) that is. Yeah. Sons and daughters are included in that. Talking about men, just like it talks about humans. Um, So that was a good little note. There was another verse that came to my mind when I was thinking about peace. Um, John 14, 27, Jesus said, my peace I leave with you. Um, my sorry, peace. peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. And this is a really great verse to share mm-hmm. with your children because there are going to be times, especially as they grow up and experience different relationships and different experiences yes. that... Um, they could be troubled. They can be afraid. They can experience all kinds of things, and they should know where to get their peace from. Where well, do you get your peace from? <laughs> well, and also they could be – there could be someone in their life causing chaos, and they can still have peace. Mm. They, the way they, in the way they respond and the way they don't respond mm-hmm. and the way they brush something off their shoulder and the way they don't hold on to something. And so they could join in the chaos. They can join in the peace-taking, mm-hmm. or they could be one that's – trying to bring the peace. Mm -hmm. And so we try and teach them that for each other, but we also try and teach that with us. Yeah. You know, peace. We (laughs) want peace in our homes. We want peace. We want peace. Number three, belonging. This is a big one. Like everyone wants to belong to someone, to something, to somewhere. We tell our kids they belong to us. Mm -hmm. They're ours. Or when we say things like we're the Smiths and then we fill in the blank. We're the Smiths. We do hard things. Yeah, it creates a... We're peacemakers. A, a patriotism. It mm-hmm. creates a, a, a unifying thought and makes them feel like they're a part of us, mm-hmm. not just, you know, they haven't earned their place yet. Mm-hmm. They haven't. No, they're ours. Mm-hmm. They're a part of it. Um, we, we've we been doing this a lot. You've been, you know, you know, sick and off from being pregnant. And so I've been telling the kids, I'm like, kids, this is, this is our home. This is your home. It's not my home. It's not Take mommy's home. It's our it. home. Mm-hmm. Like you, you guys, every, every bit of help that you do is help that mommy gets, Mm -hmm. is help that I get, is taking care of this house. So reminding them that they belong to this home, Mm -hmm. that this home belongs to them and that they can take care of it. That's a a huge thing, teaching them ownership. Yeah. And it makes them feel valuable and and, and a part and um, not a side thought Mm -hmm. or something that just exists over here in the peripheral. Something that I've been um, encouraging the kids with lately is just – Recognizing their needs with their relationships with each other and really being intentional to encourage growth, friendship, love, all of those positive things um, because we struggle in the flesh at times and my kids are learning. Our kids are learning. Mm, Um, learning. I ended up getting a (laughs) devotional that the kids can go through from Not Consumed and it's been really encouraging to be able to go through it and it's prompting. So at the breakfast table the other day, I encouraged through this devotional all the kids to share why their siblings are a blessing to them. And it was so cool Mm. to hear all the different perspectives of what matters to them and what touched their hearts or what um, encouraged them why they think their siblings are a blessing. And so um, I just wanted to share that um, I've been pouring into the kids and reminding them that God, this was a part of the devotional too, God intentionally gave 
you, your family. Mm. So there are children, but God gave them to us. There are siblings with each other. God gave them to each other. And constantly reminding our kids that they're a blessing to us, Mm -hmm. that the fact that there are children, like we we're honored, we're blessed. I I tell them, I thank God that you're my kids. I'm, I'm so, they're not a burden to us. They're not a, they're not a, a curse to us. They're a blessing. And that's important for them to know that their position in our home, their part, participation in our family is mm-hmm. a good thing. Mm-hmm. And it's an, and it's a, and it's a, a thing. I'm thankful for it. And it, I think it, everyone wants to know that every kid wants to know that they were loved. Mm-hmm. They were part of the family and not an outcast. Yeah. Um, Psalm 103 says, Know that the Lord, He is God. It is He who made us, and we are His. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Mm. And I just wanted to bring this up because we also affirm, as much as we affirm that our kids are a part of our family, that we are children of God, which I thought that was so cool that Olive mentioned that you shared this in Bible time and it really mm-hmm. impacted her, that telling them that they're children of God. Um but just, remind, just reminding your children that they're a part of a bigger family. We often will share how there's different churches in the world and universally, like we are the bride of Christ. It's not just our church yeah. or that church down the street. Um, believers all around the world are one body and sharing those scriptures with him, with them about yeah. it. And I, I want to make a, a, a note on this belonging, not just belonging in our family, but like you said, we, we make sure our children, we make sure all the children in our church know that they belong mm-hmm. in our church. Mm-hmm. Not that they're some, you know, second rate, you know, citizen, but no, they're equal parts important important in yeah. our church. Um, there's oftentimes that our children will pray in our church mm-hmm. for someone's prayer request mm-hmm. and we let them because they're a part of our church. Mm-hmm. And so letting them know that they belong to the body of Christ, just like yeah. you belong to the body of Christ, just yeah. like I belong to the body of Christ. Which is great because it ties back into purpose mm-hmm. and especially knowing that you are an individual member of the body of Christ and that God designed it that way and that no one member or part of the body is um, more or less valuable than the other. Everybody's yeah. important. And I want to I want to encourage someone. We, we might need to do a whole episode on this one day about children and salvation. Mm. I want to help understand this. I'm going to follow Jesus' example. And I want us as as believers, parents, looking at our children to understand this. The disciples tried pushing the children away from Jesus when he was doing his ministry. And Jesus rebukes them and says in Matthew 19, 14, Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for to such belongs the kingdom of heaven. And there's another verse where Jesus says, if someone causes one of these little ones who believes in me to stumble, it'll be better for him to throw, be, have a millstone cast around his neck or tied around his neck and thrown into the sea. Mm-hmm. And what he's saying in these two statements and what you see, especially when he says that we're to have faith like a child and we're to become like children, all of these statements, I believe that our children in their state, when we teach them who God is, their natural state is to believe. So our disposition towards our children should be they believe. It should not be they don't believe until they've done this prayer. They, they're not Christians until they've done this. No Jewish person ever in the history of, of Judaism, in the history of the Hebrews, and in all of the things that God told them to do would have said, oh, this child's not a Jew until they've – something's happened. No. They belong because of who they are. They are a Jew. They are a Jew by birth. They are a Jew because of the family they're in. They are a Jew because of the, the, they're a part of everything that the Jews are a part of. They're a part of all the festivals and the feasts. and the, So they're, they're there being taught. They're there being a part. There's not one time that they're assumed not. And I think as believers, we should assume that they, our children are. We should assume that our children believe. We should assume that their belief is more pure than ours even. And so we shouldn't push them away. We shouldn't assume that they're over here until they're on the inside. Well, and and to be careful of this perspective that you're talking about, because I think um, in a negative way, if we don't believe the things that they say or are um, revealing Mm -hmm. about what they believe um, could almost be discouraging if you respond in a way of disbelief. 
I don't know if I said that right. Yeah, if you respond for your kids like, well, um, maybe you don't fully understand or maybe you don't fully believe. It could or... kind of deter them from what they are understanding in that moment. But in in light of what you're saying, if you have the perspective that your children are a part and do believe when they make comments, when they're showing you and revealing to you their level of understanding, you can affirm that and you yep. can encourage them in that belief. Now, really that doesn't powerful. mean that they, if they believe as a child, that one day they're not going to have to be challenged with that faith. They will absolutely. But our job is not to challenge their faith. Mm -hmm. Our job is to encourage it. Our job is to teach them. Mm -hmm. Our job is to reveal to them God. Our job is to teach them God's ways. That's our job. Mm -hmm. It's not to discourage their faith. It's not to challenge their faith. It's not to do any of that. But there's plenty in this world that's going to do that. So I'm just encouraging Let's think the way Jesus thinks. I'll, Let the little children come to me. <laughs> I do want to share that there are children, too, that struggle with doubt from a very early age. Absolutely. And so what would your encouragement be to parents who are seeing that being revealed in their children? Um, some of our kids have come with questions, very real logical questions, things that are naturally, they'll come up when their faith's being challenged. And I tell them, I'm like, well, that's a really good question. And there's a lot of people that struggle with that same question and doubt. Mm -hmm. And I, so I, I encourage them that it's okay that they have these questions. Mm -hmm. I never want to stamp out yeah. their question for my fear of them falling Not away from believing the Lord. or something. Yeah, and I think just affirming them through Scripture, too, of what you do yeah. know and what the Lord has revealed to you in that moment of answering their question, how can you help them by navigating them through Scripture? And then always reminding that the only way anyone is saved is by believing in the Savior, in and Jesus Christ. faith comes by hearing, hearing, <laughs> hearing through the Word of God. Yep. Okay, so we're going to move on to the next one, which was a little bit of a hard one for me to put into words, but I hope you guys understand what we're talking about. <laughs> I don't think it'll be as hard as you think. No? Okay. So It's hard for some people to hear. <laughs> the Word is imperfect. Now, we're not saying that you should go around and Tell your children how, how imperfect you are. How imperfect they are, and just point it out left and right. We know that children are in a state of learning, growing, maturing, and so this isn't a negative thing. This is a reality. Reality. Yeah. And the reason why this is important is because if we uh, make comments or use our words to show how perfect they are constantly. Um, or how perfect they should be. <laughs> yeah. It could really shape their understanding or even how to receive the gospel. So this reminds me of one of our children that desires to please us all the time, mm -hmm. desires to do the right thing all the time, which is, I think, a good thing. True. But I can also see sometimes they can compare themselves to other children that may not behave that way, may not act that way, aren't as interested in as following through or mm -hmm. doing the right thing. And so... I, I go to them and I, and I say, hey, I do appreciate that you do always try and do the right thing, but I want you to know that that's not why I love you mm -hmm. and that there are going to be times that you're going to not do the right thing. And there are going to be times that you don't do you – know, you make mistakes and you don't please me, but that's not why I love you. I love you regardless that you are mine and I love you regardless if mm -hmm. you were always behaving right. That's so And good. so I, I try and – I don't want to allow – this child to be trapped by that internal drive that they have of doing per, uh, thinking they have to performing earn something or, yeah. out of performance. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of where this imperfect, you know, your imperfect comes from is, is you can try and be as good as you want to be, but that's not what has given you my love. Mm -hmm. uh, that's really good. Uh, going back to that picture of a sponge and how, when yeah. we pour into our children it makes it a lot harder for anything else to be received as they grow up. Well, this is really, um, uh, it's important, but it's a really great opportunity that we have with the time that we have with our children in our homes mm -hmm. that we get to share the gospel with them. And so if we, uh, acknowledge their imperfection or sin that comes up, we then get to follow up with, the power of the gospel. Yeah. And I think that's what makes this one so important. Um, Philippians 3.12 says, uh, Paul's talking, he says, not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Mm -hmm. And I love this verse because it's recognition that he knows what Jesus did, who Jesus was, yeah. 
what he did for him. He understands the gospel. And I want my kids to understand that. And I think when we, um, when we're built up in a way that we have a hard time acknowledging our sin or seeing reality, it makes it a lot harder to understand why Jesus did what he did. A big part of showing this to our kids is often in ourselves. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of our kids once, I can't remember who said it, but they're like, I can't wait until I'm older when, you know, I won't. I won't sin anymore like you and mom. We're like, and I was like, what? who told you that? <laughs> I was like, no, me and mommy make mistakes all the time. Their eyes like, usually get a little big when we like, say that. They're like, not but the same. I'm like, no, oh, they're different, yeah. but we st we make, we sin all the time. And, you know, Romans 5, 8, but God shows us his love for us and that while we were still sinners, mm -hmm. Christ died for us. We get to explain to him, no, we all have sin mm -hmm. and we all need Jesus. And so we, we tell them that, like, you make mistakes, me and mommy make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And so... When we repent to them, when mm -hmm. we apologize to them, when we show them we've made mistakes, it's a reminder to them that we all make mistakes, Yeah, that we all mess up. It's a times. really powerful message, and it can be super encouraging when your child does feel discouraged because they've made a mistake, uh, made the wrong decision, sinned, um, any one of those things. And, and some you, children take that harder than others. <laughs> yeah, but when you come to them and you, you explain to them, this is what you did, but there's grace for you. And, and this is why this we is, need Jesus. This is why we need Jesus. It's such yeah. a powerful um, opportunity for them to acknowledge who Jesus was and what he did for them. Yeah, and hopefully in the future, when they are on their own and they mess up, they're going to know who to go to. Exactly. Jesus. Yeah. Or when they have kids of their own. Yeah, exactly. They'll know how to respond to them. I'm sure we'll get phone calls too. Okay, I get it. I know that was really hard for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Number five, truth. This is a big one. Reciting the word of God and sharing the words of truth. It's the first thing. So like making it a normal thing in our home of preaching, teaching, reading the word of God. Practical way, we do family Bible time and we, we carve out time in, time in the morning because that's when we can do it. And we're both there and it's awesome. Um, it's not always both of us. Sometimes it's just you. Sometimes yep. it's just me. Um, I know other people that do it at night. Um, yep. There was just... a. Uh, uh, the better mom, Ruth Schwenk, she came out, her and her husband came out with um, a bedtime family devotional. Oh, so that's cool. if you guys are a family that need to do it at night, maybe check that resource out. I've known fathers that are on the road a lot and they FaceTime their families yep. and they'll do Bible time over FaceTime. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely possible to do and to figure out. Um, but getting into the word of God with our kids and as one of our kids mentioned that, that we would bring up scripture more often, it can happen at any time mm -hmm. when there's conflicts, when there's discipline op opportunities, when there's um, good things happening. Like just bring making scripture center of your home. Mm -hmm. It's the truth. Mm -hmm. um, go ahead. I was just going to say we often remind our kids because kids, they, do, they make choices that um, we'd like them not to make, like lying. And when that happens, we reiterate, God hates lying. God loves the truth. God hates lying. Mommy and daddy love the truth. We hate lying. And so just reiterating. And you guys, if this is something you're going to teach, it's got to be something you're exemplifying and choosing to walk in yourself. And so it's a really great way to remember for yourself, like, I'm a person of truth. I'm going to walk in integrity. I'm going to walk in truth and be that example for your an children. And encouragement for you as a parent. If you don't like your kids lying, even... Little lies. You should never give little lies to your kids. Mm. I'm not going to describe what those little lies could be, but just think about it. Mm -hmm. Little lies are lies. Even if they seem fun, even if they seem entertaining, our kids recognize them and they will store that away. And or, I tell my kids all the time, like, j just because it was a little lie does not mean it was good. Mm -hmm. Like, little lies are lies. You said fun or entertaining, but even just the little stuff to get them to stop asking you over and over again something or yep. um, moving on from something that you had planned and not wanting to share why. Or, like, there's lots of different reasons why you would say something to your children because you want them to understand something. But if it's not in truth, be yeah. careful. Be careful. And— It'd be better to keep your mouth shut than tell a lie. And so I just want to encourage parents. This is something that we, we, we're constantly trying not to do. We know, we didn't, our desire is to never lie to our kids. Mm -hmm. And so if, if it's either an answer we don't want to give or a lie, we don't say anything. We say we, we're not going to answer that. <laughs> I uh, got <laughs> called out by one of them for lying. Um, and it was funny because I didn't even realize that I had lied. 
<laughs> like I wasn't even paying attention. That can so I'm just bringing this up because sometimes you're saying or doing something that can be a lie. Um, but we homeschool, and one of my children, this was years ago, but one of my kids asked me for help with something. And I said, I can't right now. I'm helping this other child <laughs> who was sitting next to me doing math. And I was waiting for that child to ask for my help. Like I was just there. I was on my phone checking emails and what I don't even remember what I was doing. Um, and so in that moment, the child who wanted me said, or no, the child that was doing math looked up and said, actually, you're not helping me right now. You're just on your phone. And I looked at the other child who looked at me with big eyes and I'm like, I am so sorry. <laughs> it was very convicting. But even in those situations, you know, like how, how much of the truth are we actually telling and we should always um, be willing to allow the Holy Spirit to convict our hearts and speak to us and um, even ask, be willing to ask the hard question, hey, Lord, mm -hmm. is there anything in my life that I need correction on? Another form of lying, um, to, and we'll move on to the next one, because this is about truth. Yeah. But you can't talk about truth without talking I about know. lying. Okay. So we want to not lie, and we, but we want to tell the truth. We want to speak truth. We want to act like our Father in heaven, who is truth. Mm -hmm. He gave us the word of God, which is truth. Mm -hmm. We have Jesus. So an, another form of lying is hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. Do what, do, Say one thing, do another. So be, making sure that your actions line up with your words. Yeah. So um, that's, that's something we – like there's been things we've – like our that's kids good. want us to snuggle with them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and we say, oh, tomorrow night or – you know, and, and then we don't the mm. next night and we've had come up with another excuse. Following like, through with your words. Following through with your yeah. words. So I just want us to think through this. And this is really an important one, being a truth teller, because it builds trust with your children. And when your children can trust you, oh, like they want to remain yeah. close to you. They want to ask you hard questions. They, yep. they have a deeper, more impactful, more intimate relationship with you. That's what we found already. So... Um, I'm going to read this verse and then we'll move on to the next one. Okay. John 17, 17 through 20. Sanctify them in the truth. This is Jesus praying for not only his disciples, but also for everyone who believes in him through their word. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I consecrate myself that they also may be sanctified in truth. I do not, do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. So Jesus is praying for me and you. He's praying for his disciples. And what he's praying is that we would be sanctified. We'd be transformed in truth. Mm. And so let's make truth a foundational aspect of our homes. So good. For sure. Okay. Uh, this next one is? Number six. Reconciliation. Uh, we mentioned this last episode, by the way. Yeah, we split it up into two. Uh, I'm sorry, and I forgive you, but this one we combined so that we can share this another word. Reconciliation. <laughs> reconciliation and just practicing saying, I'm sorry, I forgive you, showing them, your children, how to apologize, how to forgive, um, building up those relationships. When you and your spouse uh, get into conflict. conflict in front of them, being able and humble enough to go back to them and saying, I'm really sorry for how I acted. Um if you said something harshly to them, going back to them, saying, I'm sorry, and showing them that heart of repentance. I remember something that was impactful for me recently is I, I saw a video on Instagram of, it was like a video playing in the background of a young mom with their child running to her and like holding, she was holding them. And overlaid on the top were these words that says, something my parents never said to me. And in quotes underneath it said, I'm sorry. Yeah, And it just was this really beautiful way of presenting this powerful message, the impact that a child receives when we are humble enough to say, I messed up. Yeah, I, I love you and I'm sorry that I made that mistake. It's so powerful. It's, it's a real necessary thing that we learn to apologize to our kids. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean we need to apologize for it. Everything we need to apologize for things that we do wrong. Yeah. <laughs> when we wrong our child, when we behave inappropriately, when we behave in unbecomingly of a believer, of a father, of mm -hmm. a mother, are, why would our children not deserve yeah. an apology? Like, what makes them undeserving of that? Remember, we talked about purpose. Mm -hmm. We talked about meaning. We talked about truth. We talked like all of these things. Like, why would we withhold that from them? Mm -hmm. they're, if they're just as valuable as you and I, then they deserve an apology just as much as I would want one. What's so great about it too is you're exemplifying for them how to do it. So as they grow up and they become yep. adults, 
they will be able to know how to do it in their relationships. And that's such an important skill to be able to pass off to your children. And Especially for all those people like... <laughs> have a hard time doing that. have a hard time saying, I'm sorry, <laughs> and kidding. didn't hear much of that when they were growing up. <laughs> it, it, what, think about you and your spouse or your children. Wouldn't you want their, their mm-hmm. spouses to be really versed and in to, apology? To walk <laughs> humbly. Um, yeah, that'd be a really good thing for, for I, marriage. I did want to briefly share that practically, I think when kids are really, really young... This might need to be something um, not forced or coerced, but you're teaching them. And so, you you know, siblings get into it and you say, oh, this would be a really good time for you to apologize for what you just did. And you tell them this is what you should do to reconcile. And then the other kid, hey, make sure you say I forgive you. And you're teaching them how to do that. And then often I'll have to say they'll say I'm sorry. I'm like, well, can you say what you're sorry for? Oh, that's a really good skill to have, too, because then you're acknowledging what the thing is. I'm sorry that I... Yeah. And then I was just going to share, as the children get older, maybe turning it into more of a question of like, okay, now that you guys are in this place, how can you reconcile? And then even as they get older, okay, um, now what? (laughs) You know, and giving them the opportunity to say what they should do and... If you want to know how important this is, everyone that's listening right now, just think about your own life. And how many of you listening desired to hear an apology from your mom or your dad? Or both. Or or maybe even a a sibling. Or a sibling. And experiencing the power of reconciliation. And what that might have done for your relationship. Mm -hmm. Even to this day. That's good. I'm sure there's there's many adults that have tension and distance in their, their families because of their parents not being willing to apologize. Mm -hmm. To reconcile areas that they've, they've aired. We didn't talk too much about this in this section, but in the last episode when we were talking about how spouses should reconcile, Mm -hmm. um, you brought up a really good point that forgiveness is not contingent on saying on the apology. Mm -hmm. And I love that. And you brought up how Christ initiated by forgiving us while we were still sinners. He died on the cross. And that's a really great opportunity, again, to share the gospel with your kids, especially if one of your kids is struggling to forgive. And mm-hmm. you can share that message with them. So if you want to go back and listen to that, it was it was a pretty extensive explanation that I just summarized, but it was it's good. Thank you. Yeah. That was good. <laughs> Last word. One of my favorite. Number seven. Yeah. Hope. 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 We need to be feeding our children hope and encouragement every single day, maybe mo- moment by moment. But it's what builds them up. It's that confidence. It's that um Looking forward to things to come, looking forward to the future. Um, It can really play out in every aspect of their life, in their relationships. Um, Most importantly, having the hope of salvation, having hope in um, not fearing death, not um, being worried about what's to come because you're secure in who you are and, and what you know about God. And so that comes through as you share the gospel with them. And we live in a world right now that is defined by hopelessness. Mm -hmm. And so much more than ever, probably, we need to be beacons of hope for our kids, that we teach that to them, that we show them that, that we have hope Mm -hmm. that boils over into their life. As a side note, because you just brought that up, I just thought there's been times that our children over here news Mm -hmm. or maybe articles, things that we're talking about. Because life's happening. Because life's happening and things are real. And um, hope is such an important word to pour into your children because if we just left them with that information, they could be feeling pretty hopeless. But if we recognize that, oh, they just overheard something or they asked a question about something that's going on in real life, how can we turn that into hope or at least reminding them of the hope that we have um, so that they don't walk around stressed or in fear or hopeless? Yeah. Uh, Romans fifteen thirteen. may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. hope. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a, it's like a hope sandwich. Yeah. For those who believe, 
You have hope on the front and the back. Mm-hmm. You're covered. <laughs> You're covered. Um, Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. This is a really great verse to teach your children. It incorporates teaching yeah. them about faith and what that is. Um, and then this other one I really liked, Proverbs 24.14, Know that wisdom is such to your soul. If you find it, there will be a future and your hope will not be cut off. And hmm. um, I think when I think about hope, I think about the future often. Yeah. And... Um, that's all the kids have to look forward to is their future. If you remember when you're kids, it's like, when can you drive? When can you get married? Get when married. You, yeah, Fill in the, the blanks. <laughs> when can you have a baby? Edith just told me the other day, I really want to have a baby because I'm pregnant. And I'm like, well, you have to wait a little bit. And she goes, how about when I'm five? And I said, a little, little bit, bit more. A little more than that. <laughs> um, little bit more. But they are always looking to the, to the future. And if we can be a sounding, not a sounding board, but like if we can be. Fill them with wisdom. Someone who's constantly reminding them of the future and say good things about it. Practically, it it looks like this. Hey, when they're not getting along with their siblings, hey, you're going to be friends one day. You're going to you're you're going to want to go out to lunch with each other and you're going to want to go to Disneyland even maybe. I don't know. Um, But that starts right now in your relationship. So go get along. Go play together. Okay, and that's a simple one. Um, But feeding them these really positive like, isn't this something that you want? Like, this is what you have to look to forward to. And this is something you can work towards, um, even with their education and their schooling. Hey, I know you're having a hard time with math right now, but think about all the things that you could do with math and you fill them with that hope of if they could just get over this hump, that's hard. Yeah. What can they get to, you know, what can they learn? So, um, we're going to give you a challenge like we gave last episode. So we're going to go through real quick. I'm going to mention them again, the seven words, and we want you to Find ways of incorporating these into your communication with your kids. One is purpose. Two is peace. Three is belonging. Four is imperfect. Five is truth. Six is reconciliation. Seven is hope. So would you take some time this week to find ways of pouring these words into your kids' lives Mm -hmm. to encourage them, to exhort them, to, to build them up? And I should have mentioned this in the beginning, but if you're listening and maybe you guys are newly married and you don't have kids yet, or you've been married for a long time and you don't have kids, these are still words that you can pour into the children around you. And so with the children around you, find ways to be an encouragement. Yeah. Amen. Let me pray. Lord, we love you. We thank you for our children. We thank you that God, you've gifted us with our children and God, we have the opportunity to speak words of life to them. And I pray, Lord, that we would do that, that we would take every opportunity to to fill them with hope and purpose and peace and truth, God, and that we would remind them, God, of how much we need a Savior. And so, Father, I pray for all those that are listening, God, that you would encourage them in their parenting. God, parenting's hard. Mm -hmm. And uh, speaking these words to ourselves often is hard. But, God, I pray that your Holy Spirit would remind us every day of how good your truth is, how good your word is. And God, that we would use our words to build up and not tear down. And God, when we do mess up and tear something down, when we use words wrongly, God, that we would repent, Mm -hmm. that we would be convicted by your Holy Spirit, God, and that you would teach us to um, be humble and seek reconciliation, Father God. We love you. We thank you that uh, you've given us the opportunity to raise children to know you. Mm -hmm. We pray that they would know you well. In Jesus' name, Amen. amen. We love you all, and we thank you that you come and join us for these episodes. And uh, we will see you in the next series, which is going to be about Jesus. And prophecy. And prophecy. Don't forget to DM, DM us and let us know who wore it best. All right. God bless. <laughs>